Thank Almighty God for yet another opportunity this side of Dimension 6 to stand and declare the unsearchable riches of our blessed Lord Jesus Christ. I greet you in that unfailing name, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I wish to announce my title, which will be Alignment. The scripture is Isaiah 28 and verse 10. Alignment. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, and there a little. I want you to follow with me <clears throat> the thought on alignment. And we are going to take it from Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation. How God aligns certain truths which are very valuable for our day. Now even in nature, they've discovered that when geese fly, they fly in a classic V formation and the reasons that they have picked up are so the geese can conserve energy and reduce wind resistance and identify the leader right at the top of the V where the V lines meet there's a leader who flies ahead. We know that alignment has been adopted into different industries and manufacturings. Today our motor cars, automobiles, aeroplanes, etc., etc., spaceships, they are shaped in an aerodynamic way. It's a form of alignment, also partly to reduce drag and fuel consumption. We very well know that at the first coming of our blessed Lord Jesus Christ, Emmanuel coming to live with us, the stars in the heavens aligned. We in our time have seen a few alignments in the heavens as a warning to the earth of his soon return. I'm going to brush, brush over the scriptures, but as I quote them to you, you go home and read them. If our technicians are pleased to project them, God bless them. I cannot do without you, dear technicians. You are part of this ministry. Watch now the alignment of 10.7. In Exodus 10 verse 7, it is written, Let them go and serve the Lord their God. Hidden where? Exodus 10, 7. Immediately the eagle eye picks up that in the book of Revelation 10, 7, there's a, there is a promise that when the seventh angels or the angel's message begins to sound, God's mystery will be revealed. And there already in Exodus 10, 7, we see an exodus. Let the people go. That is why in our day, 
under Revelation 10, 7, it's the third exodus. There is an alignment. In Leviticus 10, verse 7, Moses says to Aaron, Eleazar, Eliezer, and I come out. He says, the anointing is on you. Stay in the tabernacle. Today we know that the temple of the body of the Lord today, you are, you message believers. So Leviticus 10, 7 pleads and says, stay within the tabernacle and today stay within the message of the hour. Stay within the body of the word. Stay within and among the believers, true believers of this message. Why is Moses saying that to the priesthood? Because 1 Peter 2, verse 5 and 9 says that we are a holy priesthood. Stay within the confines of the message of the hour. That is why in Leviticus 25 verse 9, the Jubilee trumpet is sounded on the 10th day of the 7th month. Another 10-7. Jubilee trumpet to set the slaves free. Revelation 10-7. Slaves to man-made creeds, slaves, to denominationalism. The trumpet sounds in Revelation 10, 7 to announce a jubilee. In Numbers 10, verse 7, when the congregation had to gather, trumpets had to be blown, Someday we will take a subject on the different trumpets at different feasts of Leviticus 23. <clears throat> Short, long, medium, trumpet sounds all denoted different things. Stop, move, gather is an emergency all in the way the trumpets were blown. Therefore, if that is in Numbers 10 verse 7, you already see Revelation 10 7. It is an urgent message. Gather the body members of the bride. The rapture is on. In Deuteronomy 10 verse 7, I like the line, they journeyed to good Godot. A little play on words in English. Revelation 10, 7 is a journey to our good God day, good Godot. Our good God's day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Come to the rivers of waters. In Joshua 10 verse 7. Joshua ascended up with men of valor. Men of war. So Revelation 10 7 is to call for warriors in the end time. We have got to take this promised land. That is described in seven parts, seven seals. Those seven thunders under that seventh seal, that's your inheritance. O oh, ye brave men and women, gather and possess the mysteries promised to you from before the foundation of the world. I'm going to digress a little bit, go offline for a little while. It is alignment. I love the words of Ruth in
in Ruth 1, 16 and 17. Watch the seven things there. Entreat me not to stop following you. Where you go, I go. Where you lodge, I lodge. Your people are my people. Your God is my God. Where you die, I die. And where you are buried, I am buried. Alignment. Today you have your seven church ages. Ruth is being called throughout the seven church ages. Hallelujah. To be married to the Lord of the land, the great Boaz. The type of the Lord Jesus Christ because Boaz means strength is in him. And the prophet says the strength of all those seven virtues. In that part of the pyramid below, the strength of all of them is the headship our Boaz today. Align with the headship, the great magnet, the Lord Jesus Christ. In 2 Samuel 10 verse 7, David sends Joab and the mighty men. There you go again. Joshua, mighty men. David, mighty men. God, in this alignment of Scripture, is indicating to us he's not looking for people who will faint as soon as they get a little scratch in the battle, they fall out. When they see war, they run back into their caves and hide under the rocks. God is looking for warriors for this message. David's gentle warriors in the harvest time. And we are there now. The prophet preached the message, harvest time. In 1 Kings 10 verse 7, we see the Queen of Sheba, a Gentile church, coming to the gift of Solomon. And Jesus says, a greater than Solomon is here. And he's been here among the Gentiles in the last 2,000 years, in seven church ages. And the Queen of the South says, the half was not even told me. As glorious as this Bible is, as wonderful as this message is, there are things still untold and unheard when we get onto the other side. Is there a quote for it? Yes. Here are the key words. Here are the key words. Partaking of the eternal manna. A quote comes up from the exposition of the seven church ages. Where the prophet says all our unanswered questions will be revealed over there. Folks, in 2 Kings 10 verse 7, a letter arrives. In our day, the messenger of Revelation 10, 7 is the same one in Revelation 3, 14. And a letter is written to that messenger. A letter arrives. And in the case of 2 Kings 10, 7, that letter detailed what the sons of Ahab, what should happen to them. And here we are in the last days, we have seen the Ahab system rise. We have seen the Jezebel system along it. We have seen Elijah. The widow woman is identified. A letter has arrived. In 2 Chronicles 10 verse 7, Rehoboam the son of Solomon is advised. Under 2 Chronicles 10, 7, to give good words. And that's what we see in Revelation 10, 7. Good words for the soul. Good words to little Ruth. Don't make it cumbersome for her. Don't make it laborious. 
Drop some sheaves on purpose. Speak kindly to her, says Boaz to the chief of the reaper and the reapers. Do not mishandle or manhandle her. Hallelujah. Speak sweet words. Of course, I'm not going to take you through all the 66 books of the Bible. You can do that yourself. But allow me to go to Ezra 10 verse 7. Where a proclamation was made unto all children of captivity together unto Jerusalem. Here's the church that was under captivity from Nicaea through the dark ages and as we come out in the evening time Revelation 10 7 makes a declaration unto the children the children of Malachi 4 whose hearts must be turned back to the fathers and we are told gather unto Jerusalem <clears throat> Revelation 21 verse 8 and 9 John is invited to see the new city but he sees a bride he's invited to see a bride and he sees the new city Jerusalem coming down from heaven so this message of the hour is to prepare a spiritual Jerusalem the body of believers and prepare us for the new Jerusalem in the eternity that's why Proverbs 10 verse 7 says, The memory of the just is blessed. It is 2021. We look back to 1965 when God took his messenger home. And from that time till now, the memory of the just is blessed. Those who curse this messenger are in trouble with this scripture because the scripture says the memory of the just is blessed in Ecclesiastes which means the preacher chapter 10 verse 7 the wise man says I have seen servants on horses and princes walking Servants on horses and princes walking. Isn't that what happened to Mordecai and Haman? How Mordecai ended up riding on the king's horse. And Prince Haman had to lead the horse. That is why, my brothers, in Revelation 19.14, we who are deemed and called the worthless ones. Watch us come riding on that white horse. Each one on a white horse behind the great white horse riding into the millennium. Yes, princes will walk and servants will ride. Satan is called the prince of the power of the air. He is on his way to the lake of fire. And you, that was called useless and worthless, you're on your way to the wedding supper. Folks, I love Daniel 10 verse 7. Daniel says, I alone, I, Daniel alone, saw the vision. I, Daniel alone, saw the vision. Daniel 10, 7. Look at Revelation 10, 7. He had done seen the vision. And when that vision happened, watch how it aligns with Daniel 10, 7. Daniel saw a vision. WMB saw a vision. A vision of the coming of those angels, which happened in 1963. Daniel was not alone when he saw the vision. He says, there were men with me. When the vision of the coming of the seven angels happened, the prophet was not alone. There were men with him. Daniel says, 
there was a quaking. Yes, the men that were with the prophet says the earth shook and quaked. Daniel says the men with him fled. Yes, the men that were with William Branham, they also fled. Daniel says they hid themselves. Those men also took cover in the days of Brother Branham. And Daniel says, I heard the voice of words. The others didn't hear it. The prophet says, I heard. The brothers heard a thunder three times. The prophet says, I heard the voice of words. Judgment strikes West Coast. And the two parts of those words have happened. First clap of thunder, Alaska Anchorage almost sunk. Second clap of that thunder, Seattle, Washington, all on the west coast of the USA. Oh my, shook by an earthquake. Now we are waiting for that last and third clap of thunder. California, Los Angeles will go. Now you've realized we have come into the New Testament. And in Matthew 10, verse 7, Go preach and say the kingdom of God is at hand. Revelation 10, 7 is nothing but a declaration, a reminder, and a warning. The kingdom of God is at hand. Luke 10, verse 7, Do not go from house to house. Once you have heard the voice sounding in Revelation 10, 7, there is no way you can leave the message and go there and, and, and come back and leave it again and go there. No, do not go from house to house. Because house to house there are silly women laden with lusts. Women are churches. Do not hop, skip, and jump from one doctrine to the other. Stay with a pure message. Oh my! If he says do not go from house to house, it's almost an indirect way of saying stay within the house. Hallelujah. Oh my! What an alignment! Stay within the house. Matthew 24, 45, there is a householder there who's taking care of God's house and that was none other but the prophet in the end time. In John 10, verse 7, what an alignment. He says, I am the door. And today we know that Revelation 10, 7 opens the door. Revelation 10, 7 brings the mysteries that makes Christ very plain to us. That paints that picture like no artist has ever painted it until Christ is crystal clear to the eyes of my soul. Folks, if Christ is the door, that's why in Revelation 3, 7, he has the key. He is the key. Christ is the door and Christ is the key. Key to the door. In Acts 10, 10 verse 7, the angel speaks to Cornelius. Isn't that clear that in Revelation 10, 7, the last and the seventh angel in the right hand of Jesus Revelation 1, 16 and 20, the angel speaks to us. In Romans 10, verse 7, it says, Who has ascended into the deep? Another, who has ascended or who has descended into the deep to bring up Christ from the dead? Yes. The prophet preached, raising Jesus from history. Where the churches thought Jesus died and that he is no more, the prophet of God ascended into the heavenlies 
descended deep into the word and brought a clear cut revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ being raised from history proven that he is not history but his present tense he is the same yesterday today and forever second Corinthians 10 verse 7 clearly the scripture says we are Christ's possession that's what Revelation 10, 7 came to reveal to you. That you are not just a non-entity. Just a bench-warming Christian. You are his prized possession. That day on Calvary, he died having you in focus. Folks, the prophet says in 1949, 12, 25, deity of Jesus Christ he says don't be in a hurry give God a little bit of time the cogs of prophetic wheels if you want the quote punching cogs of prophetic wheels will run right into the picture it will align it'll develop the picture that's why in Hebrews 10 verse 7 it says in the volume of the book it is written of me saith the Lord. That's why in Revelation 10 there's a book coming down. The volume of the book is Christ and it is given to that messenger of 10.7. From 10.7 it is passed on to Revelation 10, 8 to 11. John representing you the church so Hebrews 10 7 aligns with Revelation 10 7 volume of the book volume of the book speaks of Christ Revelation 10 7 reveals Christ watch this alignment before we go when we bypass our theophany to come into this flesh the prophet says God took a picture of you and put it in his heavenly files. So while we struggle on the earth and we hear the word, this must come under subjection to the word. You must align. Your theophany will force you, if you are elect, to align with a picture that is in God's files. I read questions and answers. 64, 0830. Paragraph 21, this picture is the main thing. If you punch in those words exact, this picture is the main thing. Quote comes up, in the resurrection, those gases and acids will come right back into the place and develop this picture again, align. The picture was not taken when you were 8, 16, 18, or 20 years old. The picture was taken before the foundation of the world. And it was put in God's great fire. So now we come to the earth, the prophet says, bypassing that real picture, body, theophany, so that we make a choice on earth that we will align. We will hear from our theophany. When the word is preached, who is this Melchizedek? The prophet says, are you hearing from your theophany? Are you, while you are sitting in church or walking the streets, are you aligned with your theophany? Which is nothing but the word. That's why Revelation 10, 7 speaks of when he begins to sound. Listen to this. Where there is no sound... There is no sound gathering. <laughs> oh, how can people gather and ignore the one who sounded? Without that, without that sounding of Revelation 10, 7, there is no sound gathering. Brother, there are so many alignments. Here's one of them before we close. In Genesis 4, 10, 
the blood of Abel has a voice. In Revelation 4.10, the 24 elders voice their worship. <laughs> These alignments are not only 10-7. You can run them any other way and have a jubilee and a gastronomical feast with your Bible reading and tape listening. Zechariah 4.10, the plummet is in the hand of Zerubbabel. What is a plummet? In Afrikaans, it is a vaterpas. <clears throat> it's a spirit measure. To align your brickwork, you need a plummet. And the scripture clearly says, <clears throat> That plummet is not in the hand of, and in the hand of, in the hand of. The Bible is clear that in God's great and grand plan, Zerubbabel in this hour holds that plummet. What does Zerubbabel mean? We know Babel means confusion. So how can a messenger have a name with confusion? It's until you find out what Zerub means. Zerubbabel. It means he who scatters away confusion. Hallelujah! There's your messenger of Revelation 10, 7, spoken of in Zechariah 4, 10, scattering away confusion with the mystery sounding of the Son of Man in Revelation 10, 7, a Son of Man, revealing the Son of Man, Revelation 10, 1 to 6, revealed by 10, 7. And then we, Revelation 10, 8 to 11, eat those mysteries. That's why the prophet says, In add thy word, 53, 12, 04, paragraph 87, he says, Get you over one little thread of doubt. He's saying, move away from doubt. Get yourself over one little thread of doubt. Align with faith. You're on your way to that blessed rapture. In 1955-06-08, Abraham, he says, I speak to be aligned with the feel of the Spirit. If the messenger had to be aligned with the feel of the Spirit, how much more we, the preachers, who come after him, quoting and following the same example. We also must be aligned in order to feed the sheep. When the prophet in the vision led, being led of the Holy Ghost, 1956, here are the key words. Thread, little shoe eyelet, moccasin, M-O-C-C-A-S-I-N. The quote comes up, he had to align the shoelace with the eyelet of the shoe. Only then could he string it, and that line is the line of the word. But those little eyelets of the shoe was well, a baby shoe. When the prophet came with a line of the word to align us, that word wasn't received through the eye of understanding by everyone. To some people the line of the word was too thick, too hard, too strong. And they walked away. They were only under the first and the second pool. But the third pool would come back from the honest in heart. Thank God that His grace has found you. And now you understand the line of the word. Your eye of understanding is wide enough to appreciate the line of the word as the prophet strung it from Genesis to Revelation. That's why in 1964, 03-11, God is identified by his own characteristics. Paragraph 36, 
He says, staying in the line of the word for that age, this age, staying in the line of the word. There's your alignment, folks. That's why in the vision of the rapture, the ones at the back were falling out of alignment. I always argue this way. Whose voice penetrated and said to the ones at the back, stay in line, don't you, don't lose your alignment. It wasn't my voice, it wasn't that brother's voice, no, that one. It was God's voice through his prophet. I believe if you want to straighten up, read your Bible, visit those tapes. Luke 18, 8 leaves us with a great question. When the Son of Man cometh, within the Son of Man hour now, the next will be the Son of David, millennial kingdom. We are closing the days of the Son of Man. Shall he find faith? And the prophet answers in 1965, 0725, anointed ones at the end time, Part of one three zero. He says, if you follow in that line, there's an alignment. If you follow in the line of the question of Jesus in Luke 18, 8. If you follow in that line, in this hour, will it be finished? What's finished? Will Malachi 4 be fulfilled? And we know it is. Will Malachi 4 be fulfilled in this time? Christ asks, will I find that faith? Restore the children back to the fathers. Watch the original word. There's your alignment, folks. Before I go, this alignment is not to align with that church, align with that minister. That's all right. If you need to do that, fine. Godly men do pastor churches. That's what I mean. But there are some that you really don't have to align with that nonsense and that nonsense and that garbage. Align with the message of the hour. The rapture is on. You see, the word only recognizes the word. <clears throat> line will recognize line. Quote will recognize quote. Phrase well recognized phrase the book of joshua in the old testament aligns with the book of ephesians today we are the stars in the end time not hollywood holy word i close with the u.s united states police code it's called u.s 10 police code one stands for help how appropriate. In Revelation 10, verse 1, that mighty angel comes down for our help. 10-1. 10 in the code means good signal. And over in Revelation 10 the book is in his hand open. 10 means listen. And the thunders are roaring. 10-4 means, okay, seal up those mysteries. 10-5 says, means relay. He lifted up his hand to heaven and relayed an oath. 10-6 stands for busy and urgent. Yes, he took that oath. Hallelujah. 10-7, I'm almost falling over, in the American U.S. Code for Police, 10-7 means service. The seventh angel, when the mighty angel comes down, is on earth at that time in service. The American police code says 10-8. 10-9 means repeat. And there it is in Revelation 10-8, 9, 10, and 11. John, eat the book, repeat the prophecy. American police code 1010 means the fight is on. Folks, 
Are you on duty? Are you aligned with this message of the hour? Are you aligned with Jesus Christ? If you are not, make use of this opportunity to come back in line. And I bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! Oh.